Happy Friday. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, today we start a new chapter, chapter eight. We're gonna look at chapter eight, section two today, first part, and then Monday we'll look at a second part. But before we start, I wanna talk about the test results. Apparently there seems to be a plague of students having accidents. I got a number of emails from students saying, I accidentally put this number in when I meant to put that number in. Well, here's the deal. Apparently each of you had two accidents. First of all, you accidentally put in the wrong number. And second of all, you accidentally forgot to check your work before you submitted it. How many of you, when you send an email, type it out, don't even read it or proof it and just send it. And then later you look at it and go, oh, that's not what I meant to say, or I sent it to the wrong person. I would assume that you check your email before you send it. Well, likewise, in WebAssign, you type in the answer, you have a chance to look at it before you submit it. So uh, those accidents, uh, you just need to be more careful with reading your work before you submit it. All right, anyway, today we're gonna talk about the idea of a function. And I'm gonna read to you, this is from page 614 in the textbook. I don't know if your loose leaf copy uh, lines up with this, but this is in section 8.2. It says function, and then it says domain and range. It says a function, so let's write that word, a function is a set of ordered pairs in which to each first component, there corresponds exactly one second component. The set of first components is called the domain of the function, and the set of second components is called the range of the function. So for each input, there is exactly one output. The input is the domain, the output is the range. For each input, there is exactly one output. Let's consider the following. Let's say we have some people. We have John, Maria, Sam, and uh, Olivia, okay? And over here we have birthdays, which technically could be any day of the year, right? Well, John, his birthday is April 2nd. Maria's birthday is May 4th. Sam's birthday is October 12th. And Olivia's birthday is also May the 4th. Is this scenario possible? Absolutely. Each person has one birthday and only one birthday, but more than one person can have the same birthday. This is how a function works. For each input, there is exactly one output. For each person, there's exactly one birthday. But you can have more than one person with the same birthday. This is the way a function behaves. Let's take a look in terms of some mathematical symbols rather than people and their birthdays, okay? Well, let's see here. How about this one? We've got 10, 20, and 30. And over here, we've got 20, 40, and 60. In these examples, the left side is always the input or the domain. The right side is always the output or the range. So in this particular correspondence, we have the following connections. 10 goes to 20, 20 goes to 40, 30 goes to 60. Does this describe a function? And if it doesn't, show a contradiction. It does describe a function. For each value in the domain, there is exactly one value in the range. 
each input goes to exactly one output. So yes, this is a function. Let's look at another example. In this case, negative four goes to six, negative two goes to eight, zero goes to 10, and zero goes to 12. In this case, we have an input going to more than one output. So this is not a function. And ordered pairs that show the contradiction are this. We have two ordered pairs where the same domain value is going to different range values. So it is not a function. Any question about those two examples? All right, let's look at a set of ordered pairs. We have the following ordered pairs. We have three comma four and three comma negative four and four comma three and four comma negative three. Does this set of ordered pairs fit the criteria for to be a function? So is it a function or not? It's not a function. For example, here we have the same input going to two different outputs, or we could use these two and say, here are the same input going to two different outputs, not how a function works. Let's take a look at this example. Is this a function? Yes, it is. Now, we have, what, five different inputs all going to the same output. Can five different people have the same birthday? Sure. What about, uh, is it quintuplets? Okay, they wouldn't even have to be quintuplets. You can have five different people with the same birthday. It's the other way around you have to avoid. Okay. Let's take a look at some tables of values. One, two, three, four, five, seven, 15, 23, 16, and eight. Does this table describe a function? Yes. For each input, there is exactly one output. So yes. Here, does this describe a function? No, why not? Because one input is going to several different outputs. So a couple of examples of a contradiction would be 30 goes to two and 30 goes to four. So it's not a function, okay? Uh, all right, now let's talk about function notation, okay? If I had the equation y equals 2x plus 1, and I wanted to find some ordered pair solutions, I could make a table and pick some inputs. How about 0, 1, 2, and 3? Then to complete the table, to complete the ordered pairs, I would start by saying, oh, put zero in for x, y equals two times zero plus one, so y equals one, y equals two times one plus one, which is two plus one, which is three. When x is two, y equals two times two plus one, which is four plus one, which is five, if x is three, y equals two times three plus one, which is six plus one or seven, right? So uh, completing ordered pairs using an equation. If we have an x value, we plug that in the place of x, calculate the y values, all right? Now, from the looks of our table, 
it appears as though this is behaving like a function, and indeed it is. There is a symbol that we use in place of Y to tell the audience, the people reading it, whoever, that this is a function. It behaves like a function, okay? And the symbol that we use looks like that. Now, so basically Y is the same as F of X, or I should say F of X is the same as Y. It's a way of writing Y that tells people that it's a function. Now, the problem with this symbol is that it looks like F and then parentheses X. And usually if you have parentheses around something and something in front of it, you multiply. So it looks like it's F times X, but it's not, it's a single symbol. Also, when you say this symbol, you say F of X. Well, we learned back in math uh, uh, what, 75 in percent problems that the word of often means multiplication. So when you say F of X, you naturally might think, oh, that's F times X. So it looks like multiplication because of the parentheses. It sounds like multiplication because of F of X, but it's neither. It's a single symbol that's a replacement for Y, okay? In fact, the full name you would say, f is a function of x. So if we take the equation y equals 2x plus 1 and we write it using function notation, we replace y with f of x. So it would look like this, f of x equals 2x plus 1. Now, to find these same ordered pairs using function notation, this is how we would write it. To find this first one, we would say f of zero equals. So the x value goes inside to replace the x. Now, how would we find what f of zero is? The same way we did over here by plugging zero in for x. So we get f of zero equals one. This is function notation for that ordered pair or if you wrote it this way, that ordered pair. So this is the same as this, is the same as that, only this is function notation. The input is on the inside, the output is on the outside. All right, how would you find f of one? You'd put one in the place of x and you'd get three. So f of one equals three. So this ordered pair, corresponds to this ordered pair. But again, this is written using function notation. Okay, any questions about that? All right, now let's take a look at some functions. Here's one, it says f of x equals three x minus five. We are to find f of three, and f of negative one. So f of three would be three times three minus five or nine minus five or four. So f of three equals four. That corresponds to the ordered pair three comma four. If we were to graph this function, the point three comma four would be a point on the graph. All right, f of negative one, equals three times negative one minus five, which is negative three minus five, which is negative eight. So F of negative one equals negative eight. That corresponds to the ordered pair negative one comma negative eight, which also represents a point on a graph. Any question about these examples? Okay, here's another example g of x equals x cubed minus x. We are to find g of two and g of three. And notice how I'm calling it. Oh, wait a minute, what happened to f? Well, we can use pretty much any letter. We don't just have to use f or f of x. Just like we don't have to limit equations to x's and y's, we can use other variables. In fact, if this was a, uh, let's say a business algebra class, we might have a profit function that would be P of X, 
a cost function that would be C of X and a revenue function that would be R of X. So we can use different letters to stand for different kinds of functions. Since this function is G of X, then G of whatever means we're plugging it back into this particular function. If I said g of x equals x cubed minus x, and I said find a f of four, you'd be going, well, I can't put that in there. It doesn't work, okay? All right, g of two is gonna be two cubed minus two, which is eight minus two, which is six. So g of two equals six. g of three is gonna be three cubed minus three, which is 27 minus three, which is 24. So G of three equals 24. Any questions about that example? Okay, let's take a look at another example. This says H of X equals X divided by X squared plus two. We are to find H of five and H of negative two. So to find h of five, we put five in the place of x everywhere it appears on the right side of the equation. So five over five squared plus two, five over 25 plus two, five over 27. So h of five equals five twenty-sevenths. That's the function notation for the ordered pair five comma five twenty sevenths. H of negative two would be negative two over negative two the quantity squared plus two, which is negative two over four plus two, which is negative two over six, which is negative one third. So H of negative two equals negative one third. Again, any questions? All right, let's take the following function, h of x equals x squared plus x minus two over x squared minus five x. And let's find h of negative two, and then h of five. So h of negative two would be negative two to quantity squared plus negative two minus two over negative two to the quantity squared minus five times negative two. In the numerator, negative two to the quantity squared is four, and then we have four plus negative two minus two, which is what? Four plus negative two is two, two minus two is zero. In the denominator, negative two to the quantity squared is four, and then minus five times negative two would be plus 10. So this would be uh, zero over 14, which is just zero. So H of negative two is zero, okay? Any questions there? All right. Let's find h of five. h of five would be five squared plus five minus two over five squared minus five times five. So we have 25 plus five minus two, which is what, 30 minus two, 28? over 25 minus 25, which is zero, but 28 over zero is undefined. Now, we have a situation here. Negative two produces a real number zero. So we would say that negative two is in the domain of this function. It is an acceptable input because when we put negative two into the function, it spits out a real y value or h of x value of zero. However, five is not in the domain of the function because it does not give us an acceptable answer. When we put five into the function, turn the crank and it spits out undefined. 
it does not give us a real solution. So we would say five is not in the domain. Now, the answer for the specific problem is just undefined, but I'm getting, getting ahead of where we're going here, uh, which we're gonna get there eventually. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's say I had f of x equals 2x plus 3. Let's see if I can make a better f. f of x equals 2x plus 3, OK? So f of 0 would be what? 2 times 0 plus 3, which is 3. f of negative 4 would be 2 times negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. What would f of star equal? Anybody want to volunteer? f of star. Nobody's talking today. OK, well, it would be 2 star plus 3. Because whatever we put in there, we also put in there. How about f of uh, Barbie? f of Barbie would be 2 Barbie plus 3. How about f of uh, Ralph? f of Ralph would be 2 Ralph plus 3. What about f of 4w? That would be 2 times 4w plus 3, which would further simplify into 8w plus 3. So again, whatever's in here goes in the place of x. What about this example? g of x equals 2x. Find g of w and g of w plus 1. So if g of x equals 2x, g of w would be 2 times w, or just 2w. g of w plus 1 would be 2 times w plus 1, because all of w plus 1 replaces all of x. We're taking 2 times x, so we're taking 2 times the quantity w plus 1, so we get 2w plus 2. Any questions there? All righty. What about g of x equals 2x minus 7? g of w would be 2w minus 7 g of w plus 1 would be 2 times the quantity w plus 1 minus 7, which is 2w plus 2 minus 7, or 2w minus 5. Any questions there? All right. This says, let f of x equal negative 2x plus 5 for what value of x does function f have the given value? And then it says f of x equals 5. All right. Recall from earlier, f of x is another name for y. So up till now, we've been putting inputs in and getting outputs. Now they're telling us what the output is. It's kind of like Jeopardy. Here's the answer. What's the question? What value of x put in? produces five coming back out, all right? Well, this is kind of like solving the following situation. Let's complete the ordered pair. Well, it's actually, it's exactly like it. Complete the ordered pair, blank comma five. So the five goes in the place of y, right? It doesn't go in for x, it goes in for the whole thing, the whole thing, which is y. 
So now I've got five equals negative two X plus five, okay? Subtract five from both sides, zero equals negative two X, divide by negative two X equals zero. So for what value of X does function F have the given value for X equals zero, okay? So when zero, so in other words, F of zero equals five, you know the output, what's the input? It would be like going back here. Let's see, where was it here? And saying, who has a birthday on May 4th? Maria, Olivia, okay, those are the inputs. Who has a birthday on April 2nd? John, it's like, so we declare the output, what is the input that corresponds to that? All right, let's do one more of those. So, so let f of x equal three halves x minus two for what value of x does function f have the given value, and it says f of x equals two thirds. So what input, what x value produces an output or a y value or an f of x value of two thirds? So we're gonna substitute two thirds in the place of f of x. We're not gonna find f of two thirds. It's not going in the place of x. It's going in the place of the whole thing. So we'd say two thirds equals three halves x minus two. We need to solve for x. Well, we could clear the fractions. We can live with the fractions. Um, well, let's go ahead and clear up. So we'll multiply both sides by what? Six. So six, 12 over three is four equals 18 over two is nine X minus 12, okay? Then I'm gonna add 12 to both sides, 16 equals nine X divided by nine, X equals 16 ninths. So F of 16 ninths equals two thirds for what value of X for X equals 16 ninths. And there you have it. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, again, we will uh, visit section 8.2 again on Monday to look at the second part of it. Uh, I will be correcting your tests over the weekend and uh, I'll be back this afternoon at 1.15. Should you have any need for me during my office hour, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording